will love the Lord thy God with all your heart, or you will feel the pain of his judgment, for that is his love. Well, uh, I, I like shows that are about worlds because I, I really am always fascinated by what you see on camera versus what all this, the, a rich world that's happening off camera. Um, but, uh, you know, um, I, I think, you know, I've read dystopian fiction my whole life. There's something about kind of a world that's like ours but a little bit changed uh, that is very appealing as a storyteller. The fact that it's, you know, a dark future or a worse future. I, I don't know that that's true. I think you're looking at a, a, you know, normally through the kind of the ebb and flow of history, things get better and things get worse. And we're, and most of the, the dystopic fiction is, uh, takes place at a time when things are worse. But they, it doesn't mean that things aren't going to get better again. You're just looking at a, at a convulsion. So, that's the core message of the ending stuff. Yes. But how? And and is uh, Alfred going to survive? Um, and ha and even if she does survive, what is that? Like yes. And what does that look like? What what does survival look like? You know, when you when you get out of there, like you know, Moira got out of Gilead, but certainly Gilead ha Gilead is still with her. Exactly. Gilead is within you. Uh, not, not really. I, I, I try to let the audience put it in in a political place, and, and you know, uh, for me, I'm I, I'm I work on a very simple maxim, which is just what would really happen, you know. And so, when you're thinking about how did Gilead happen, there are certain pivot points for people, um, and that's what we're always looking back to show. I mean, some of them are very, very obvious and big. And some of them are much smaller. There's a story in the, in the first episode of the season just with when June takes her daughter to the hospital and the way the nurse talks to her. And it isn't so much that that wouldn't have happened before, just that that was the first time it landed on her that something is changing, something big is changing. And so that's what we're always looking for in the past. And I think that um, it it causes me to look around to the world as it is now and think about, well, what what little things are happening now that are inflection points that I'm missing? They're happening all over the place. What am I missing? And I think that for, for me, it, it's just offered story in that environment. Um, I'm not trying to draw a particular parallel, but I also, showing June back in the world of the real world creates a contrast with Offred now that that is invaluable towards understanding the character and connecting with the character. I think both. I think both those things are true. I think there there are there there uh, there already is an uprising, and uh, there's there's been an uprising, both big and small, since the very very beginning. Since Offred arrived, every time Offred does a little something to change the power dynamic in the house to her advantage, that's a rebellion. Every time she does something to slow the wheels of progress down, every time she, you know, uh, ignores the fact that she's bleeding and, and may uh, have a miscarriage, uh, that's, a, that's a, a, a rebellion. And there's lots of small rebellions, and then there's some bigger rebellions. Uh, but I... The thing that I like about this moment is this is the biggest moment of rebellion that Offred has seen. Just you want to see how the world looks uh, f from a, a woman's point of view or a person of color or whatever. You just want to have more because all of those shows I found every time you see something, it's fascinating. I mean, you know, and, and I'm in a very lucky position of having a room full of incredibly intelligent, uh, thoughtful, stubborn, 
sensitive uh, women who are very good at explaining to me and to other people uh, what it's like to go through the world in the skin of a woman, but also good at answering the questions that come after that. Because oftentimes, you know, a statement doesn't help us. We want to know why. And, and, and it's hard to, it, you know, you have to be tough to, to be comfortable being probed like that. And you have to trust the other people in the room. And in, in fact, I think it's one of the things that helps the show is that if the room was full of one kind of person, there'd be no one who didn't understand you wouldn't be explaining it to me. I, I'm the idiot in the room, so I get everybody can explain it to me. And I think in some ways you get to fight out and understand and really dissect what are these elements that make the show a feminist show so that you can put them on TV in a way that's much more fleshed out and be, because some things you just take for granted and it's hard to express something you take for granted. But if you can find a way to express it in a way where you do lay it out for people in a clearer way and that's where I think I come in is the is the person who who I need to be explained to so representing those people in the audience who just don't get it you know uh, I'm I'm trying to help them get it no matter what I'm not going to stop I'm trying to keep you alive you and our baby she left me once now I have to leave her your house has been infected with terrorists. I need to know. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. We come here, we work, we die. What's in here? 